Hello family, this is Greg coming to you from faithsmessenger.com. Today I want to talk about the attitude of faith. The attitude of faith. The Bible says that the just shall live by faith. For the Christian, faith is a way of life. It's a lifestyle. And with that lifestyle comes an attitude of confidence confidence in God and in His Word. Now sometimes that confidence can come off as arrogance or cockiness, but there is a distinct difference between arrogance and confidence. Arrogance points at oneself as being the source, as being the person in charge, the person running the show. Look at me, it's all about me. Whereas confidence exudes an assurance that it's the Spirit of God that is producing in our life. It's the Spirit of God that is the product of our healing, the product of our deliverance, the product of our salvation. So therefore we can have extreme confidence in God's Word and what He said. You know, my name is Greg and I am completely assured, I'm confident, quite confident that my name is Greg. And you might ask, well, how can you be so dogmatic about your name being Greg? Well, I can be dogmatic about my name being Greg because I've seen my birth certificate. I know what it says. I know the information that, that, that's on that certificate. So for us as Christians, we have a rebirth certificate, which is God's Word. We know what it says, and we can be confident it's more sure than any physical birth certificate can possibly be. God's Word is sure, God's Word is steadfast, God's Word can be trusted and relied upon. And based upon that confidence, we can demoralize our enemy. We can know in our hearts that we overcome, because greater is He that is in us than he that is in the world. We have the victory, not at the end of our battle, but victory is ours before the battle even starts. You know, I'm a, a big boxing fan, and one of my favorite boxers of all times is George Foreman. Now George was, he fought in the heavyweight class. He held the title for quite some years. George Foreman was six foot three and approximately 240 pounds of solid muscle. And what George brought to the table, along with his physical attributes, was the psychological edge. George demoralized his opponents psychologically. One of the big things that was distinctive about George is that in between rounds, most fighters would go to their corner and sit on a stool for the minute in between rounds and recuperate. Well, George never sat out. George would go to his corner, stand in the corner, and glare at his opponent. Now, can you imagine from the opponent's standpoint, if you've just given your all to beating this guy down, and in between rounds, you go to your corner exhausted, but George would go to his corner, and he wouldn't even sit down. He would stand and stare at you. That had to be demoralizing to his opponents. We have the power of God within us. We can do the same thing to those situations, those circumstances, to our enemy. We can demoralize them because greater is He that is in us, the power that is in us, than the power that, comes, that can come against us. So I want to encourage you today, I want to inspire you today to demoralize your enemy. There was a saying a few years ago in a commercial, popular commercial that was out at the time, to never let them see you sweat. Employ that same tactic with whatever you're going through. Never let your enemy see you sweat. God knows your heart. God knows your mind. He knows what you're feeling. He knows what you're going through. And you may be completely exhausted. You can be completely worn out by the challenge that you're facing right now. George Foreman got tired. I'm sure he got tired. He's human like the rest of us, but he never showed that fatigue. He never showed a weakness to his opponent. So I want to inspire you to never let your opponent see you sweat. 
go to your corner, glare at him. You've got the word of God. You've got something that's sure, that's steadfast. 1 John 5, 14 and 15 tells us that this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us in whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petition that we've desired of him. The battle's won before it's even begun. Just hold on. When you're dealing with the things of God, it's never a matter of the promise coming to pass. It's always a matter of the time. So I want to inspire you. Hold on to God's word. Stand steadfast. God's word will never let you down. Thank you for joining me, family. I look forward to speaking with you again. Please go to our website and subscribe to our mailing list or subscribe to our YouTube channel and be notified when new videos are released. Now I want to leave you with a question that you, I'd like for you to apply to any circumstance that you're going through right now and answer the question honestly. Is anything impossible with God? Thank you, family. I love you, and I will talk to you soon. Have a great day. Bye-bye.